Okay, so let's look at question 10. So again, this is the final one in sort of the freestyle proofs here. So again, we have our two given statements. So right away, I would just write those down. We're saying segment AB is parallel to segment CD. Okay, so that means we can put, uh, I'll put a little arrowhead on each of those lines just to indicate that those, that single arrowhead is a parallel line. And we also can say angle one is equal to angle four. Okay, so again, our reasons that are, they are given. Okay, and um, we can start with that. And let's just mark that in here. So angle one is equal to angle four. Okay. So <clears throat> we want to prove angle one is equal to angle two. That's going to be our last statement that we want to get to. So what can we look at here in this diagram? Now we, we're not, we don't know the lengths of the diagram here. Um, but an, one thing we can see right away is that angle three and angle four are vertically opposite, right? It's just the intersection of two lines. So that is a statement that's worth putting in here. So we can say angle four is equal to angle three. And that is because they are vertically opposite to each other. That's the property that says we can make those equal. So I'm just going to mark that one in. And then we can also say, because we know AB is parallel to CD, we can look at angle two and angle three. Okay, because this is again, this is one of those properties where we have a transversal across a parallel line. So our fourth statement that we could put together here is angle three is equal to angle two. So these are, this is a alternate interior. angle okay so that means those two are going to be the same so we've got a lot of equivalencies here so is there a way to kind of think the, think through this here so we want to prove that angle one now equals angle two so if we look at the statements we've got it says your angle one is equal to angle four and then angle four is equal to angle three okay we would putting those two statements together means that angle one is equal to angle three Okay, and that means, and then our fourth statement here says angle three is equal to angle two. So that means ultimately angle one, if angle three is the same and angle four is the same, ultimately angle one equals angle two. So our fifth statement, which is gonna be our last one, okay, because if we've seen the pattern here, we can say that angle one must equal angle two, okay, through the methods of substitution. Okay, and that is a way that will, it will logically progress so that we can say angle one is going to be equal to angle two because we've created a whole bunch of angle equivalencies that are essentially sort of cancel each other out. Okay, so again, this is like five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and we start by putting in the given assumptions. We just want to keep in mind what we're trying to prove, but we need to kind of mark in where all the, the valid statements are and then eventually get to our, our final statement. Okay, so that's how I would approach uh, th these questions. Always just start with the given statements. Mark what's, mark what's true in on your diagram. Start to look at um, angle properties, okay? Things like vertically opposite angles, things like alternate interior angles, things like co-interior angles, which add up to 180 degrees. Okay, fill in what you can see on the die from the diagram to be true and then start analyzing what your equivalency statements mean and see if you can actually reduce it down to one of the the statements at the very end